Hi, I'm Coach Amber, and welcome to the Meet RX Success Story podcast. Today we have Dominic with us, and he's going to share his success story. Hi, Amber. Thanks for having me. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Dominic, mm -hmm. uh, prior to starting a meat based diet, can you give us a little bit of an idea of what your health was like and what kind of issues you were going through? What made you want to try a meat based diet? Yeah, you know, it was a, a gradual transition and uh, I still incorporate some plants in my diet, just kind of far less carbohydrates for sure uh, over the last couple of years. But I, you know, kind of known for studying the ketogenic diet and prior to following a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet, I was eating quite a bit of carbohydrates and this dates back to like 2007, eight. Um, and it was around 2009 or 10 that I adopted a low carb ketogenic diet, which was mostly dairy based. Uh, and I was eating a lot of drinking, a lot of protein shakes and, and bars and things like that. And over the years, I've transitioned away from getting my, my protein and nutrition from bars and shakes. And as I transitioned sort of away from dairy, more towards meat and organ meat, uh, have a lot of liver and heart and we have, we live on a farm. So we have abundant amounts of wild game and grass fed meat. Uh, my health has gradually improved and I had sort of autoimmune issues growing up like eczema and they will definitely flare up if I get away from my current, you know, dietary protocol. Awesome. So when you very first started, give us an idea of what your diet was like. What did you include? I know you mentioned in the dairy, but like how many times a day did you eat? Did you fast? Did you have any transitional issues? Yeah, I was really uh, adamant about eating like every two and a half to three hours. And I was eating... Um, a lot of chicken, uh, a lot of uh, oatmeal, uh, rice, some sweet potatoes. Uh, I had already phased out like 10 years ago, I, I had already phased out grains pretty much because I noticed they were flaring up. Uh, it, was, it would trigger eczema. And uh, you know, over the years I started studying as a, a university researcher, the ketogenic diet. And to get the amount of fat that you needed in the diet, I was incorporating a lot of dairy fat and uh, dairy products. And I still have uh, sour cream and, and some dairy fat. I've kind of eliminated the dairy protein, but my meal frequency went from six meals a day and I uh, gradually tapered that off to about three meals a day where once or twice a week, I'll just do one meal a day. And on, uh, and I, you know, I've done intermittent fasting for periods of times. Uh, I tend to lose a little too much weight if I do that. So I had to back off from doing it. I like doing it, <laughs> uh, but I, it's hard for me to get in the amount of calories and protein that I need to sustain, you know, just my, my weight. Um, so, uh, it's very liberating. So going on a meat-based diet, which is also a way more, I was followed a low fat diet for many years the protein and the fat is very satiating and you inadvertently calorie restrict. So without really making an effort to lose weight, I have to sort of remind myself uh, to eat enough uh, to, to even maintain my weight. So I see a lot of the benefits for people where their goal is to, uh, to reduce their, their, their body weight, redu reduce their adiposity, reduce their body fat. Um, and also I wear a continuous glucose monitor and we do research measuring many biomarkers, uh, basic science research and clinical research. And I found that, uh, a carnivore based meat based diet works to control blood glucose better than any other diet that I've, you know, experimented with. And, uh, I was a little bit concerned about all the protein, but I noticed the last week I not only measure do continuous glucose monitoring, but I also measure insulin and with my blood work and notice that uh, my glucose and my insulin stayed stable, even when bumping up my protein, you know, to 200 grams or more per day, uh, which is really surprising because I thought all the excess protein may turn, may bump up my glucose, but my continuous glucose monitor data is really impressive on this diet and Probably if you're a type two diabetic, this is without a doubt the best approach to really managing your blood glucose. That's awesome. Did you have any issues 
when you started doing more of a meat-based diet and anything that did, kind of stood out that was problematic? You know, not, no, not really. I can't think of anything. I, I, uh, getting in enough, you know, you can only eat so much meat. <laughs> so, uh, when you're eating hyper palatable foods, like, uh, carbohydrates and fat together, it's much easier to overeat those kinds of foods. So I found that eating me corrected my eating behavior in a way that I just, I ate till I was satiated and I didn't have overwhelming cravings that, you know, in some cases, you know, back when I was eating a lot of carbohydrates, it was almost paralyzing if I went a certain amount of time without food. Um, but, you know, I, it makes intermittent fasting easy because your body is sort of adapted to, uh, to a lower level of glucose and also the reduced glucose fluctuations will prevent any kind of cravings because you don't have, if you're eating carbohydrates, you get that postprandial rise, but then you get that dip in glucose. And when you get that dip in glucose, it, it triggers a hunger response that makes you go seek out more carbohydrate-based foods. So that's significantly abolished or if not, you know, attenuated when you're on this diet. So your energy levels are really stable. Um, I like to, you know, work out and train with weights and I've been able to maintain my strength or increase my strength just by, you know, adding more protein in. That's awesome. And I cannot agree with you more. I have found the exact, exact results as that, and, and it's pretty amazing. So you, you've kind of talked a little bit about the benefits, but if you could name, say, the top three things that you really benefited from, what would they be? Yeah, appetite control, probably the first thing. And uh, I'm... Uh, I have a research scientist, but also an educator. And there are periods of times where I need to just kind of lock down and work for five, six, seven hours straight, sometimes 10 hours if I have a grant application. So it's very liberating not to be hungry. So appetite regulation, um, body composition alteration. So, you know, the fat loss just happens without even trying. Uh, I don't have to count calories. So, uh, you know, uh, most of the diets out there, pretty much all of them, and even, even a ketogenic diet, they really advocate for counting calories, counting macronutrients for the, for the most, and some people may need to do that, but I think the large majority of people can follow this diet and not have to be obsessed with tracking calories, tracking macronutrient ratios and, and things like that. Uh, and I think my nutritional status uh, so appetite regulation, body composition changes, and also, um, you know, when I get blood work, I look at my nutritional status and that looks optimal. Like, uh, in the past I had low levels of, of certain nutrients. And since I've been eating a meat-based diet, I do incorporate a lot of organ meats too. So we have liver once or twice a week and heart and things like that. So my nu the nutritional status of my blood work probably looks the best ever, like vitamin D, uh, you know, magnesium, uh, B vitamins, things like that. So it, like pretty much across the board. And I would have to say my cardiometabolic blood work in general talking hemoglobin A1C, insulin, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, which is a marker of systemic inflammation, has improved across the board on this diet. That's amazing. And I love that you actually have real data to support that. I, I wish more people could do that. And I think that a CGM is so incredibly important. I wish more people could do that. And I plan on doing that very soon. And Dominic, thank you so much for sharing your story. I think it's great. Uh, the more people that can hear these stories, uh, it just makes it that much better to get that information out there. So again, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And thanks for having me. I appreciate being on. Absolutely. Bye, Dominic. Bye-bye. Thank you.